Hello everybody, my name is Peter Klapper from the School of Biosciences at the University of Kent. In this clip I want to discuss with you how we can simplify the reactions in the Calvin cycles and uh, where we can see how basically the maths of regenerating ribulose bisphosphate actually works. So, first of all, let's remind ourselves about the importance of the Calvin cycle. So, in the Calvin cycle, we use products of the light reaction in photosynthesis. These products are ATP and NADPH. And in the Calvin cycle, which happens in the stroma of the chloroplast, uh, we then fix the carbon dioxide and eventually produce um, sugars that are used uh, otherwise in the plant either for energy or for storage. Now, uh, we've discussed the light reactions in uh, detail and uh, the Calvin cycle in general can be found in all major textbooks. And it's usually depicted uh, as this cycle that has uh, three different stages. So phase one is the carbon fixation, where we um, <clears throat> attach the carbon dioxide to ribulose 1,5-bisphosphate. In the second stage, we have the reduction, so we need ATP and NADPH, and we produce this glycerol aldehyde 3-phosphate molecule, this is G3P, which is a three-carbon sugar. Uh, one of those uh, enters basically the uh, sugar production in the cell, and the remaining uh, five glycerol aldehydes G3Ps are required to regenerate the uh, carrier or the binding molecule, this ribulose 1,5-bisphosphate. And we are basically talking about this uh, part here. So, really, what happens in this area here? And very often this is depicted in a rather complicated way in uh, the textbooks. And what I do uh, in the next slide is uh, show you how the maths of, of these different uh, three carbon products works. I need to change the color here. <clears throat> so we always uh, start off with a three carbon compound, namely with this G3P, so G3P, glycerol aldehyde 3 phosphate, and I just write down the number of uh, carbons that we have. So we've got two molecules of this uh, G3P, so we've got 3 plus 3, and that gives us a six carbon molecule, in this case uh, a fructose a derivative. This six a uh, carbon molecule reacts with another molecule of this uh, glycerol aldehyde 3 phosphate, so 6 plus 3, and this gives us, uh, so that gives in total 9, and 9 can be uh, separate or split into 4 plus 5. Now here we already got uh, our first 5 carbon molecules and this can be easily converted into a ribulose bisphosphate. So we've got already one uh, 5 molecule out of these uh, 3 glycerol aldehyde 3 phosphate. Now this 4 carbon molecule, which is actually an erythrose a derivative, this 4 plus 3, and again we've got one of the glycerol aldehyde 3 phosphates, gives a 7 carbon molecule, acetoheptulose um, compound, and this 7 plus 3 can be split into 5 plus 5, so 7 plus 3 gives 10, and that gives 5 plus 5, and here are our two other molecules that can be easily converted into ribulose bisphosphate. So what have we used? We've used 
one, two, three, four, five molecules of this G3P, so five times G3P, and this gives us in these reactions three times ribulose base phosphate. And of course, we need some energy. We need ATP for that. Uh, but uh, for the time being, uh, let's not worry about that. So what we just uh, see in this scheme is that from these uh, three carbon blocks, we can very easily just simply do the sums. So three plus three gives six. Six plus three gives nine, which is four plus five. 4 plus 3 gives 7, 7 plus 3 gives 5 plus 5. And uh, with this uh, order of uh, events, we can very easily schematically uh, lay out the uh, Calvin-Benson cycle and the regeneration of this ribulose 1,5-bisphosphate. I hope you found this useful and uh, thank you for watching my videos.